Hey guys, in this video we're going to use the Python request library to control the pins of Raspberry Pi by making HTTP requests to the Flask app we built in the last few videos of the series. If you haven't checked those out yet, go do that. I'll put a link to them in the description. So let's log into Raspberry Pi and fire up our Flask app. If you don't have the code from the last few videos, I'll put a link to the GitHub repository with the code down in the description so you can clone it and follow along. So let's make sure the server is running by sending a GET request to our Swagger documentation. Okay, there it is. Now to the pins endpoint. Okay, we have our nine pins up. Okay, and let's just get one pin here. All right. Okay, everything seems to be working, so let's uh, try to make some requests now with Python. So let's open a Python interpreter. Okay, so you're going to want to import the request library. The request library is the de facto Python library for making HTTP requests. Okay, let's save the URL of our pins endpoint so we don't have to type this over and over again. We need somewhere to store our request object. And the syntax is pretty simple. We'll just make a get request and we'll return our uh, Swagger documentation again. And you can see it made a get request here. So let's see what's in this request object. Okay, so it's two string, it's just a response code. So let's see what the content is. Okay, there it is. So let's try making a get request to our pins endpoint now. Okay, made the get request, let's see what's in it. Okay, so this is just a stream of bytes. So we can return this as a string by using the text field. So now it's a string here. But we can see this is encoded as JSON and the request library has a nice JSON decoder in it. There we go, so there's our pins. Let's just clear the screen here and take another look at our pins here. So let's store this in a list. Okay, so we now have a pins list. So the request JSON's decoder has turned this into a usable Python object, a list of pin dictionaries in this case. So we can work with it like we would any other Python list. So let's just iterate through this list and print out the color. Okay, so let's get uh, a single pin here. So let's put in the URL and we'll get uh, the third pin. Generally, you want to use a library like URL lib to join URLs so you don't have to worry about slashes, but I'm just going to not worry about that for now. And we'll just want the JSON data. Whoops. There's our pin. Okay, so we have our pin here. So let's change the state to on and make a put request to turn on an LED. The syntax is similar. But we want to send this as a string. We can pass in a Python object and this JSON decoder will encode it for us. So we'll just send in our pin three here. And there we go. Just turned on our blue LED. So let's turn this off, but now using a patch request. So with a patch request, we're, we can change just one field. So we can pass that in again as our Python dictionary into our JSON encoder here. And there we go. Turned off our LED. Okay, so let's write some functions that do the same stuff we did when we were controlling the Raspberry Pi pins directly with Python. This time though, we'll send the request over the network to our Flask app, which will then make the GPI commands for us. So you can see that the only real difference here is instead of controlling the GPIO pins directly, we're sending this request to our Flask app and having it change them for us. So in the program that we use directly in the part two, which I'll link in the description, we stored our pins locally. But in this case, we're gonna have to make a get request to get our pins and then we'll loop through it and make the changes. 
So we're going to have our toggle color function and our switch on all, switch on off. So let's just try them out right now. So the program that uses the request library to access our REST API, I saved as Lightshow. So let's import that. And let's also import our first program we wrote there a while back, pin controller, so we can compare the two. So first let's call the program that calls them directly pin controller and we'll call the all on function here. There we go. And let's turn them all off. Okay, so now let's try the one that is making the request to our Flask app. All right, so I don't know if you noticed that, but there was a slight delay when it was changing each light on. Oh, here, I'll turn them off. Do it again here. Not sure if you can see it in the video there. But there's a slight delay. So here's the direct one. Seems almost instant. And now the ones that and now the one that's going over the network here. And the reason for that is because when we make our HTTP request it blocks and waits for a response before it moves on. So that's why that slight delay is happening. That's pretty cool, but uh, let's write some functions that do the same stuff that we did in the other video when we were controlling the pins directly. But this time we'll have to send requests to our Flask app over the network. So here on the right you'll see that first program we wrote a couple videos ago. This is controlling the pins directly with Python. And on the left here we have the one that uses our REST API. And you can see there's not much difference between these functions here. The major difference is instead of controlling the pins directly using the RPI GPIO library, we're going to have to send requests to our Flask app. I'm going to use patch request here. So we also have our wave function here with its default value here. So uh, let's try a couple of these out. We'll, we'll start with our wave function here. And we'll import lightshow. This is the one that's using our Flask API. And we'll also import the older one that uses it directly, pin controller. So let's try out our wave function in uh, the light show. There we go. And we can see all of our patch requests rolling in. So it's making that get request for the pin list. And then it's iterating through them and turning them all on one at a time. So let's just control C to end this loop here. So I wrote uh, this wave rand x function here, which just adds a little more randomization to our wave function. So it'll sleep for a random amount of time between min time and max time. And you can see the only difference here really is this is using the pins, which are defined in the program. And the pins that we are using here need to be returned by our get request to our pins endpoint. So let's try out this function. Let's just turn these off first. And let's try out that wave ran function. We'll use the default timings for now. There you go, you can kind of see there's some randomization to it here. And let's just try out the original here. So you can see because we're making the request through our own loopback interface, there's not much variation between the response times. But if you're sending this over a spotty connection, you can see a a much larger delay between these. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I have added a file called collab to this git repo, which I'll put a link to in the description. So you guys come up with any cool functions you want to share, just pull that and you can put it in there. Or you can also just comment your code snippets down in the comments. Thanks for watching guys.